Hey, go over here. This kit with everything except idlons and multipliers was just filled on Hoylab, so it's that time of the month to do a little pre-release guide. I'll be using footage from the live stream and info from the Hoylab post to determine more details like possible energy cost and how much HP she may drain. And with that, I'll discuss how nice her kit looks, her probable best relics, light cone options, as well as cool synergies for her. A full guide discussing her multipliers, calculated best light cones, relics, and idlon calculations on top will come out on release, so subscribe if you don't want to miss out on all that juicy information. But for now, a bit of pre-farming and discussion won't hurt anyone, so let's begin. First of all, if you're pulling for meta, she looks to be another solid top tier DPS. She will have weak single target damage in her starting turns, but then she will have what looks to be incredible burst AoE turns of damage when she's in her special state. As we know, destruction units love blast attacks, and so does she, so her single target damage in this state should perform excellently. She also has the same benefit of Blade of consuming little skill points compared to the regular DPS carries, so she has some potential to use SP heavy supports as well as any that come out in the future, including Bronya who has difficulties using her maximum power with units like Daniel. But of course, we still do it and it works, I even use Bronya with my Daniel. Using less SP also means she can be more versatile than other units, just like Blade can kind of fit anywhere since he only uses 0.25 skill points a turn and spews out damage. One problem is her HP drain, but as long as you've got a strong solo sustain, I think you're fine. So she is a 5 star ice destruction unit, our first of this combo, and her setback as a destruction unit is that she has weaker turns outside of her special state, and then she consumes ally max HP when she is inside the state in order to do her big damage. Her basics look to be nothing special, so enjoy spamming her skill. Her skill also looks to be nothing special, but it becomes godly in her spectral state, which the skill will help you get towards. Every standard skill will grant her a Syzygy stack. Finally, her ultimate is a blast attack that will also grant a Syzygy stack. This ultimate looks to have a high cost though, judging on pixel difference that I screenshotted and tried to measure from the 1.4 livestream, somewhere between 120 and 140. Now, what do these weird named stacks do? Well, when she reaches two of these stacks, she will advance forward, meaning her turn will be taken quicker. She then enters the spectral transmigration state, which will do many things. It will buff her crit rate by a percentage, lovely for those people failing relic rolls, then it will enhance her skill and she can only use this skill or her ultimate in this state. Then it will make any attack she does consume ally max HP, but this consumed HP will buff her attack for the attack she does, whether that be her skill or that ultimate, but it will only buff that specific attack. I found in the live stream that the max HP siphon looks to be 4-5% max HP, so that could be a total of 12 to 15% max HP siphoned in two enhanced skills and an ultimate in this state, or 16 to 20% if she can get another stack with this ultimate. So watch out for your health bars. Her technique is really cool though, and is our third dimension technique, and even follows her around. It will freeze enemies in the overworld, which looks so fun, and then when you enter combat, you'll gain a stack of Syzygy and some energy as well as freeze the enemies. It seems pretty strong and will probably be used all the time to speed up her ramp up time. Her traces were revealed too, so let's see how good they are. Her first increases her effect resistance when she's in the spectral state. It depends how much it gives, but can definitely help DPS when it's high enough. Hook has the same, but for CC debuffs specifically, and makes 100% chance CC debuffs go to about 86%. This will be for all debuffs instead for Jingliu, which is pretty great. Her second advances her action forward after using her standard skill. This in my book makes it even more obvious that her standard turns are obsolete and are just used to enter the spectral state, since she has a trace that legitimately wants her to take faster turns outside of it. It is a very nice trace though. The final one will increase her ultimate damage when she is in this spectral state. This means she will want to enter the state using skills and not her ultimate, which was already kind of necessary due to the attack buff not benefiting her ultimate unless she was already in this state. This just further incentivizes this rotation. What this also means is you can have two stacks of Syzygy and ultimates during it to have another turn of this spectral state. So for pros she seems to have a lot of self buffs. Self buffs are pretty necessary if you want to be a standalone strong DPS since nearly everyone can use pretty much all harmony units. She seems to be an AoE Yanqing without the setback of losing your buffs. As long as you're healthy, you will keep them. She also has blast damage, which combines great single target damage with great AoE damage, so she will have the best of both worlds. Finally, her having a burst duration means you can stack up buffs for said timeline and not worry on other turns, meaning she's not too hard to buff compared to consistent units that want buffs on all turns. 
because she of course drains max HP. It doesn't seem like too much, but can stack up quite a bit. And for underinvested or weaker sustain units, this will be a pain. Also, this ramp up and burst type playstyle may be annoying to abuse without a unit like Bronya. Asta of course can speed buff, but her attack buff may be very diluted with Jingliu's own self buff. She also has a lot of self advance forwards to help out, so she's of course fine without Bronya, but it'll still be worse, but maybe that's just because Bronya is too good. Finally, her ultimate usage may be forced to be used during her spectral state for the max power, which makes her a bit stiff to use. More pros and cons will come when we discover her full kit and multipliers during the full guide. One final con I will say though, to follow into the next section, is her light cone might be a bit too good for her, especially since she buffs her own attack a lot. But she's an attack sailor, so she'll still be fine with other ones. So speaking of that light cone, let's look at her probable best light cone and her signature. Her signature is incredible and completely ignores the fact that attack percent will be diluted. So first a crit damage buff, which is great since she buffs her own crit rate. Then when an ally gets attacked or loses HP, so every attack during her spectral state will prog this, the wearer will gain a stack of Eclipse up to 3. So when you siphon the HP of all your allies, you'll immediately get 3 stacks, and your next attack will have this max buff. Each stack increases the next attack's damage by 14%, so 42% at max, and then it also gives her 12% death ignore on top at 3 stacks. It is a bit overloaded and also very niche. It's per attack and is based on allies, so unless your allies specifically get hit a ton, not the case with Clara, or you're running this on a unit with Jing Liu in the same team, you won't be gaining this benefit. Amazing light cone and will definitely outpace Eon by a lot. It won't work for Blade though, unless again you're in the same team as her. So <laughs> maybe it's time to pull multiple copies for the whole squad. The next best light cones will be the usual Secret Vow, Eon and Under the Blue Sky. All light cones with just really nice stat stick buffs. The other limited 5 stars do not seem to work well on her since Blaze won't work unless she is hit and she doesn't want to use basic attack for Daniels. Now for Relics, which comes in combination with her light cone and why the thumbnail talks about Quantum Set. This also comes into play with her high alt cost which hurts the effectiveness of the ice set. But then since the ice set is about burst turns and she will use her ultimate before 2 enhanced skills, the ice set will still keep up in power. The ice set buffs the ultimate when it is used, before the ultimate does damage, it doesn't apply the buff after. And then it buffs your next two turns, so it's a lot of free crit damage. Even if she will already have a ton, the quantum set's DPS increase is only in certain situations. Quantum set gives quantum damage percent, which is useless for her. The real power is in the 4 piece. You get 10% death ignore, which will always happen no matter your element, and it will get 10% stronger if you're against quantum weak enemies. Doesn't matter if you're not quantum. This by itself versus non quantum weak is a DPS loss on any DPS that isn't quantum, so never run it alone. But then when you add Pella or Silver Wolf to great supports, it varies from nearly as good or slightly better than the unit's normal relic set combo. This is because the more defense shred, which stacks with defense ignore, you have against an enemy, the more damage boost additional death shred or ignore gives. So if you have her signature and you run Pella, Pella I think being one of her best supports, then Quantum Set will be better than I Set. If you run Silver Wolf, not all enemies will have her defense shred, so it will only make Quantum Set better in single target. If you don't have her signature, Ice will probably be on par or better, and if they're not quantum weak, the same thing. If you have Pella and Silver Wolf Max together, then you won't even get the full quantum set effect anyway, but it should still be strong too. So for Relics, just go 4 piece Ice if you've already farmed it, but farming it is a pain. Quantum 4 piece if you have a Death Shredder and or her signature, and 2 piece Ice, 2 piece Mask will likely be nearly as good as these 4 pieces, since the set bonuses aren't too amazing yet in Star Rail. 2 piece combo is ideal for people who don't want to farm too much. For playing it, you'll definitely want Rutal and Arena as it seems her biggest damage will come from her enhanced skills. Spacing Station and Inert South Soto will of course be, like on any DPS, close and it depends on subs, but Rutal will be king. For main stats, crit damage chest most likely or crit rate if you can't reach whatever crit threshold she has on release. Speed boots unless you want to get your spectral state in the 22nd century, or attack boots if you have a hyper speed Bronya, and even then speed is probably still great. As damage percent orb of course, and attack percent rope. We will see on release if energy rope is needed, but since she can enter her burst form without her ultimate, I doubt it. For subs it will be prioritizing crit rate to her threshold, speed to 134 probably, and crit damage and attack. For Sinji's it will be blade of course, she consumes his HP, and that HP cut will be less than the damage he takes normally for his talent stacks. This means more damage from Blade, more heals, and they're both light on skill point usage over normal DPS. You can thus form a dual DPS comp with them too, and a dual buffer like Pella, Silver Wolf, or Bronya. 
Bronya is the other big Senji, she removes the ramp up pretty much completely and her buffs are insane. She can also probably skill spam due to the lighter skill point usage from Jin Liu, provided you have a skill point positive teammate or two on top. Finally, Palette is amazing, especially at E4, for a combination of AoE Death Shred and single target Ice Resistance Shred. Plus, you don't need Blade or Bronya to run Jin Liu. From what I can tell, she's a main DPS and these are just top Sinjis. I do think her best team will have Blade, but Palette is an option and you can go double buffer for her like any hyper carry. So, let me know if you're pulling for her and what your plans are. See you in a few days for the full release guide, for a lot of juicy info, and sub if you don't want to miss that. Thanks to all my amazing members, thanks for watching, and have a good day.